Hey everyone, this is Big Guy DIY Robert. Uh, today's project is working on this truck. We're going to be installing uh, new rotors in the front end, new brake pads in the front, as well as in the rear. And I'm going to show you that doing brakes and rotors are actually pretty easy. Technically speaking, there are only four bolts you need to remove to do rotors and brake pads. And that's it. And you can do them with uh, simple tools. You don't need pneumatic tools to do it. You can just do it with ratches and wrenches. Uh, definitely need a C-clamp on that as well as a hmm, piece of guard board to lay on in the driveway. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to jack the truck up and uh, get the jack stands underneath there so I can have both wheels up and knock the front off quickly because I'm running out of daylight. These are the new pads that I purchased and these are the new rotors. If you decide to do this, I'll give you a heads up, these suckers are heavy. They're 30 pounds each. So they're not they're not light, that's for sure. <clears throat> uh, total cost for these, I think it was um, I'd have to look that up. I'll look that up and get back to you on that one. I can't think of it offhand. So let me set this up and uh, do a time lapse as we get the truck up in the air. So, if you can look at the rims here, they're covered with this black dust. The brake pads I've been using for the last couple changes have the metallic metals in it for stronger braking uh, capacity, just because I tow a lot with my pickup truck and uh, I got tired of having black tires dark brown tires all the time so I've changed this time to Bosch these are a uh, ceramic brake pad so the stopping power of these let's say on a scale of one through four four being the best the metallic are four these would be a three all right the uh, reason I'm changing the rotors is I got 132,000 miles on the truck now, 133,000 miles in the truck. I'm still running the original rotors on this truck and I'm starting to feel a slight wobble in my steering wheel at highway speeds when I apply the brakes very gently. So that tells me that they're warped. Two ways brakes get warped or rotors get warped is when they heat up the and they get splashed by water or something like that that'll warp it the other thing I was told is if I do the lug nuts way too tight which I have a history of doing uh, that also warps it and uh, give you an example these I just got new tires put on this week and they had to bring out a three-quarter 
Chuck air gun with I think 1600 pounds 1600 pounds just to undo the lugs because I over tighten them and they told me to stop doing it so we're gonna switch angles here now I was saying earlier that there are four nuts to take off in order to do your brake pads and your rotors and I'm going to show you them here so two nuts hold on your caliper okay back out here so this is your brake caliper right here you have a nut here at the top here and then you got another nut right there at the bottom those two hold your caliper onto the caliper housing which is this part here let me turn on my light here there which is this thing right here is your caliper housing this also is held on with just two nuts so if I go on the back side here's my finger on one and then here's my finger on the other right here so if you take off those four bolts this entire assembly will come off to reveal the entire rotor now when these rotors are put on by the manufacturer usually there'll be like a little lock washer on here it's um has like multiple teeth and they just push it on and it it the the teeth go against these threads on your lugs on your lug bolts and it just holds the caliper on for production uh, moving forward you don't need those you can get rid of them uh, it's fine for this rotor to be installed without those if you have problems getting this rotor off here and here are two threaded holes they take a metric nut no not nut a metric bolt that you would screw in and what it does is it applies pressure to the back side of this hub and kind of forces this rotor off because what happens is sometimes over time this rotor will rust or corrode on the hub wheel hub and may not want to come loose in my case since I'm replacing it I don't have to be delicate with this I can take a uh, a mallet steel mallet and just whack the crap out of it and knock it off so right now what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna remove these bolts that I pointed out so here here to take my caliper off and then the back side of it here and then down here to take the caliper housing off as I said these brake pads are also going to be replaced and I'm gonna show you what those looks like once I remove all this off Grab a, uh, just a piece of coat hanger, pull your caliper off with the coat hanger, hook your caliper with it, and just hang it off the side. Like so. Alright, we're going to clean all this off, get all this brake dust out of here, clean the surface off of this, you can see how it's rusted on there, but I clean all this off and I use anti-seize on all of this. I don't know why, but usually these bolts that are used are metric and I want to say 10. 13 13 millimeters 13 metric for those Here are the brake pads
there's uh, not much left, not much left on there. Maybe uh, eighth of an inch, and that's it. Don't throw these away right away because you're gonna reuse them. You're gonna use them to uh, squeeze these calipers back in so you can put the new brake pads on so all of this can slide over the new rotor so just drop them underneath your vehicle this pad is nothing left wow it's almost metal on metal see how loose the rotor is that's fine. Now there's clips you gotta remove from the old brake pads. When you buy new brake pads, these clips come in the kit. All kits. Next is this bolt here, and this bolt here to take the housing off. I'm using a 3 16th socket. You all right there? You okay? You fell. Even though I'm using American socket to take this off I know this is metric but I don't have a I don't know I'd have to look I don't think I have a metric this size I probably do I'm just being lazy and there we go you can see how this is all grooved out let's see if I can get better lighting on this or a better angle See all the grooves? That's that's a uh, sign of a failing pad. And when this happens, you can't reuse or put new pads in on the, on a rotor like this. This is damaged. And to go get it returned, returning me, uh, returning means bring it to a place. And what they do is they grind it down to have the rotor turned, not returning. Have it turned, and it grinds all this down. But there are grooves throughout this whole face. So these are NG. So looking at the front of this, this is pretty clean. I don't have to wire brush anything at all. What I'm gonna do is uh, apply anti-seize on the back side of this here and along this edge here because the rotor actually sits really tight on this edge and then uh, reinstall the uh, bracket that holds the caliper There you go. That's my anti seize that I use on everything. What it is is anti seize is a grease that can't be really washed off. 
from water or salt um, it prevents things from rusting or corroding together so it's also very good to use on your lug nuts as well This is a breaker bar. I'm just using this to make sure it's nice and tight. Now, when your caliper is attached to this point, see how these float? This allows the caliper to float along with the rotor, but there is grease inside there. And so there is a lip where you can pull this out Kind of see that and it's it's looking quite dry it should be all greased up so you don't use any grease you have to use this brake caliper grease it's specifically designed for these pieces to allow it to slide in temperature does not affect it so that's why it's used So when you put it on, you want to be a little on the generous side. It's okay, some squirts out. When you put this back on, you'll notice there's a lip here on this thing. Let's see if I can zoom in here for you. Right here is a lip. That's what the rubber boot has to go over in order to stay sealed up. All right, so when you put your caliper, I wouldn't call it a butt, a uh, bolt, because your caliper bolt is screwed into this part here. Um, but when you put this back in, slide it back and forth to spread the new grease out. And then slide the boot over. Remove your excess grease. There we go, that's ready. And then do the same thing for the bottom. Next, I want to clean off this caliper, the contact surface here that um, touches the brake pad. And I'm just going to use an air tool as like a uh, Brillo pad on it. surface here now has been cleaned so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some uh, grease see how I can peel this little rubber boot back this boot protects these calipers as they slide in and out but like anything they get some rust and water in there so I'm going to give them a little grease in there
and then I'm going to grease the surface that the brake pads are against. And I said earlier, save your brake pad. You're going to use this. And what you do, put your pad on here, you get a a C-clamp open your C-clamp up to fit over your caliper including the brake pad and then slowly close close your C-clamp on this what I'm doing is I'm pushing the calipers here the hydraulic calipers back into their housing By doing this, it will allow me to put on the new brake pads. And now you can see how these are flush to the rest of the housing. So that's the reason I said keep the brake pad. I think uh, next time I do a brake job on this I'm going to have to replace the entire caliper because the rubber boot is starting to disintegrate in a couple spots. But other than that we'll get a, a few more years out of it. So now that this is ready to be reinstalled we're just gonna hang it off to the side for the moment like so and we're gonna install our brake pads the brake pads for the front end are much much bigger than the brake pads for the rear the rear brake pads are really small So there's your bag of hardware that I mentioned that always comes with brake pads. Old, new. Now these clips are stainless steel clips. I call them clips because they clip on. And what they do is they all clip on into the housing that holds the caliper. So before you clip them on, you want to put a little anti-seize grease on there, on the flat part, both on the inside and the outside of the caliper housing. Don't try not to get any grease on the rotor. That's important. Then you're going to have problems stopping. You do not need a lot. Now these only clip in one way. As you can see there's a lip here and it's flat. This flat part goes against the uh, rotor. When you put them on you go against the back of the housing first and then come forward to make it tight. You'll have uh, eight of these inside your equipment bag. Next, your brake pads. You get these little tabs here. You got one here and one here. These are what slide into these clips. So I just do a little anti-seize on there.
There. Pads are in. I know I put grease on the caliper, but I still put a little grease on the metal back side of the brake pad. Never hurts. So I'm going to grab my first bolt. And we're going to reinstall the caliper. When you take this caliper off, be conscious of the brake line that it's not twisted at all. I also put anti seize on this bolt here. So we're just going to do our first bolt in. We're not going to tighten it. We're going to slide this on. A little anti seize again. Tighten our bolts. And there we go. We're done. New rotors, new brake pads, greased up. Bolts have been uh, greased up or anti seized. Our bolts, our bolt, yeah, our bolts, our lug bolts for our lug nuts are all been uh, anti seized as well. So all we have to do is throw this tire back on. So this is Big Guy DIY, that's how you do a rotor and brake pads. I think that took me 30 minutes and oh I gotta get you the price for that. I'll get you the price, hang on. So price for that total is 185. So I'm doing a complete brake job on the truck meaning four pads all the way around plus rotors on the front end for 185. Uh, I use I got my parts from Rock Auto um, because they give me a very large list of parts to choose from and prices within my budget so I mean you can go crazy on rotors I've seen them up as high as two hundred and sixty dollars per rotor so when you order these it's per rotor if they're not sold in pairs unless it specifies but all of them are sold individually for brake pads, when you buy them, they're a pair, meaning for the front, whole front end, and a pair for the whole rear end. And that's it. If this uh, helped you out, give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe down below. And I'm going to give you another side note on something for those F-150 owners. Let me show you. Some of you know that I live up in New England, up in the Northeast, and I spend a lot of winters driving pretty far up north. So I'm driving through a lot of slush and salt and whatever they throw on the roads to try to keep the snow from melting. The one thing I found with all F-150s, there are no aftermarkets to enclose this engine compartment. This is wide open, and so everything gets splashed and just coats your whole engine compartment. What I did is with a cardboard template, I cut out this piece of plastic. And you're wondering, where can I get a piece of plastic to do that? Well, right here at our local box store, this is actually a gutter. <laughs> it is literally a rain gutter. It's plastic, it's relatively thick. And what I did is I took a heat gun, heated up the sides, both sides, and made it flat. 
Then I took my template and, and carved it on here for what I needed to put more protection over the engine. To hold it in place, you can get these little plastic things from any hardware store or big box hardware store, your Home Depot or Lowe's. You know, it's these up here. That's all it is on the back side or on the front side. So that's your top and that's your back. And you just drill your holes and put it in. I've also done it on the front, but I, I wore it out. It wasn't big enough, so I gotta redo this tonight. Because it's supposed to come down here. Because on the back side here are my uh, fog lamps. And so everything is just spitting on the back side of the fog lamps and corroding it. So I just wanted to point that out to your F-150 users for your front end to protect your engine. That's it. A simple fix using something you can get in the store. Alright, have a good night. I got three more wheels to work on.